Okay. Well, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'll get started right now. I'm sure that when Russell Jeans comes, we'll all be over there eating. <laughs> but I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it because I'm not going to pick a yes, sir. Yeah, you think that would be funny, huh? <laughs> we should get him a, somebody who can walk his dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Huh? I didn't hear somebody. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to read a little bit out of this uh, scripture right over here. This is in Matthew 7. I've been reading, I've been reading a lot out of Matthew 7 lately. Um, well, 5, 6, and 7. And uh, I want to just start right here. What verse is that? Verse 11, Matthew 7 and 11, it's up here. And I'm going to read that for you, and then I've got a whole lot of other stuff I want to read to you. But I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go back and get some other scriptures as well. So uh, let's do this. It says, If ye then, being evil, how, or know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give you things, uh, give, give good things to them that ask? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. He says, uh, enter ye in, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many be there, uh, be there, uh, which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raveling wolves. Uh, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth <clears throat> fruit, uh, uh, forth evil fruit. And good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits shall ye know them. <clears throat> not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have, we've, have we not prophesied in your name? And, thy, and in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then while I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that worker of iniquity. That word iniquity means lawlessness. Therefore, now I'm going to give you the answer here. Jesus is going to give you the answer. Watch this. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, uh, which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house. And it was, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. That's the wise man. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a, few, a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the, and the rain descended, and the flood came, floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And I'm going to leave it right there. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you another scripture over here. And not that one. I'm not going to read that one or that one. I'm going to read this one. This is, um, this is in uh, uh, 2 Peter uh, 1. And I want to read this to you because this is important here. He says, uh, let me see where I want to start here just to make sure that, well, come on. Just to make sure that I get you the full uh, handle on what I want to say here. Um, let me just start right there in verse 5. It says, for this reason, for this very reason, uh, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with goodness and goodness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are, in, are, are yours and increasing, they keep you from being in, uh, ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whatsoever lacketh, for whosoever lacketh these qualities is also uh, nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you shall never fail. And I'm going to stop right there just for a minute. I want to just talk to you out of that scripture just for a minute. Um, let me explain to you something. How many, let me, let me start right there. Are you glad you're born again? Yes. 
All right, I'm glad I'm born again, okay? And I'm glad that God's on my side. I'm glad that he's not imputing my trespasses, but he's helping me. He's, he's giving me strength. He's giving me grace. He's doing all these good things for me, and I'm thankful. <clears throat> but how many of you know that um, in everything he did do, some of your growth is left up to you? It's true. How many of you know that there comes a point where you have babies, right? How many of you have ever, you've had babies? You help those babies to a point, right? And after a while you're going, hey baby, get up. Right? Don't poop your pants no more. That's it. I'm done with you. Right? How many of you would like to have a 10-year-old still poop in their pants? How about pee in the bed? No, nobody wants that garbage. You know, I'm saying, I'm not saying that that's a problem. Sometimes people have deep emotional problems and things happen. I'm not, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying that there comes a point in your life where you're the parent like God and you say, okay, I've done what I can do now. It's time for you to do something for yourself. You got to stand up. You got to be somebody. You got to take over, right? Okay. The Bible says that you, everybody say me, you make your calling and election. What? Sure. You do it. How many of you, when Jesus went to heaven, he sat down? He just went up there and he goes, hey, I got me a nice relaxing chair here. I'm going to sit down right here at the right hand of the Father, and I'm going to intercede for my people. And that's what he's doing presently. How many of you know Jesus didn't have it interceding for us? The Holy Ghost is here on earth working and doing what he does to draw people in. Because the Bible says, except the Father draw them, they ain't going to ever get born again. You know, it's amazing to me how people take the gospel so stinking lightly. You, pay, you need to pay attention. They take us so lightly, you know, and then and then you hear about somebody pass away and you're going, holy cow. Every opportunity was right in front of them. And they just they just blew it off like it wasn't important. But I promise you, the second they passed away, I found out, boy, that was important. I shouldn't have ignored that. That was kind of like, are you sure? I'm telling you, you need to pay attention to the gospel because it's the power of God and the salvation It's the difference between life and death. Right? I'm telling you the real truth. Don't ignore what the Bible says. The Bible says, listen, I'm going to give you one more thing here. I'm going to get back to this. And I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that there's going to be a lot of people. How many of you remember the virgins, the, the, the ten virgins? You remember those guys? Matthew 25. What did the Bible say about ten virgins? Guess what? They was all virgins. Let's just say it this way. There's all Christians. Right? Yeah. The problem is 10 of them, or I mean five of them. Oh man, God, I forgot my oil. Read the Bible. They forgot their oil. And the, 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 the guy, the, the watchman calls, he says, hey, the bridegroom cometh. And they jump up and they go to trimming their wicks and they're going, oh my God, I forgot my oil. And they come to Walt and they say, hey, Walt, can you loan me some oil real quick? He goes, no, I, I got to make sure I got enough. You better go run back down there and buy some before it's too late. They go down to buy some and come back. And what happened? He'd shut the door. They knocked on the door and they said, hey, let, let us in. We're virgins. We, 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 we're, we're part of this. Sorry, I didn't know you. Are you listening? I didn't write that. That's, that's just the Bible, dude. Listen to me, I want to show you, I want to share something with you. The Bible says that there was people in that day, they said, Lord, Lord, hey, hey we prophesied in your name, dude. I don't think they said, dude. <laughs> hey, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out devils. We do all this. I'm going to have to read that for you. I can tell you're looking at me like, are you sure it says that? Let me, let me get it here. Let me, I don't know where it's at. I just got to run. I got that scripture there too, but let me find this. Okay, it says, many will prophesy to me in that day, or many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, this is in Matthew 7. I read it to you already. Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have we cast out devils, and in thy uh, name have we done many wonderful works? And then shall I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you that worker, uh, you workers of iniquity. Um, uh, let me see. Therefore, okay, I want to talk about this guy here. See, this is the difference between the two. The two people that the one person said, Lord, Lord, the other person, 
And he said, I didn't know you, the other person. See, he's describing that people because he says one's wise and one's foolish. Let me explain to you. He says one's wise because he, he built his house on the rock. What is the rock? That's obeying the sayings of the Lord. Right? He said, you know what? The wise man, he keeps my sayings. He builds his house on the rock and the winds come and the rains come and the stuff happens. But there's his house after it's all said and done. He's still standing there. The same rain, the same wind, the same storm comes along. And the Bible says that house collapsed because he built his house of the sand. What is the foundation you're building on right now? It better be the word of God. It better be the sayings of Jesus. Right? Yeah, it better be because he's the, that's the foundation. That's the rock. I don't know. I'm going to say this. I probably said this before, but how many ever lived through an earthquake? I have never been in an earthquake. That kind of tells you why I live in Arizona, right? We don't have hurricanes. We don't have earthquakes. I've yet to see a volcano blow up around here. Uh, what else? No tsunamis. What else we got? Um, we got no tornadoes, right? Uh, we don't have very many bugs, actually. H have you thought about it? You know, you go to the East Coast and you get eaten by bugs. We don't have that problem in Arizona. I guess that Arizona's got its good and its bad. I, you know, in Arizona, you got to deal with the, the dry heat. You know, it'll, 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 it'll melt your hair. But you don't have all the other stuff. And then you got to deal with drought every uh, so often, except for last year. It was wonderful. But, you know, um, we, need, we, we need to understand that when we build our house on the rock, I'll just say it real plain. It's like moving to Arizona. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you. No, it's, it's, we have got, we've got, listen, man, if you can't hear nothing else, I say, hear this. Don't take the gospel lightly. Don't go off and live your life as if it's not important, because I'm going to tell you something. You can, you can ignore the Bible, but I promise you, it's not going to ignore you. There's going to come a day you, you're going to say, God, I'm sorry. He's going to say, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear your excuses today because you had your full life to take care of business. And you didn't take care of business. I'm shocked at people. It's like, oh, I got my whole life. I'll take care of business. Hey, don't live that way. Right? Everybody remember this. I've said this three Sundays in a row. The Bible says that, you know, what does it profit a man? Finish it. If you gain the whole world and you get everything you want, but you died and go to hell. You're a fool. Right? You're a fool. And you ignore the gospel. You know, I'm amazed at people. Um, <clears throat> And you know what? I don't want to pick on people, but we need to pray for people because some people it's like it's like they're not just on a little roly coaster. They're like on a major roly coaster. You know, like whoo, whoo. one day they're up here. Yes, I'm going to serve God. The next day they're down here saying I'm going to hell. They won't say that. Come on. Can you hear what I'm saying? Why can't you just be on a stable incline run into the heavens? Just get on a run and stick to it and hang to it and just climb your cl fight the good fight of faith and make sure that your calling and election is sure. That's your job. How many of you know that Jesus wants you to make it in? Did you know it? You don't believe me, do you? I guarantee you he wants you to make it in. I guarantee you he wants you to make it in. The Bible says, you know what? Because of the gates that's really wide and it's like, whoa, come on in. You know, he says, many, be, be, many people are going to go down that road. But he said, you know, we got another. He said, we got a little narrow gate, straight gate. He said, and there's going to be a lot of people that are going to miss it. But you're not missing it. You're sitting in church listening to the gospel. And if you ignore it, it's a bad day. Everybody say bad day. Bad. Somebody says, well, I don't have bad days. You're going to have a bad day if you ignore the gospel. You hear me? You're going to have a bad day, dude. Someday it's going to come back and haunt you. You know, I tell people, I tell people, um, there's this thing. It's, yeah, I'm going to just say this real quick, but there's this thing. It's called the law of association. Have you ever heard about that law? 
Let me explain to you what that law is. That law says if you hang around the wrong people, you're going to get crushed. That's why I like to see people when they get born again, they come and they hang around Christian people rather than go back to their friends. You know what their friends do? Come on, let's go drink. Let's go smoke some pot. Let's go do some crack, man. We're going to have some fun. We got to party down here. You know, whatever they do. I don't live that life. You know, I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I'm not interested in it. You know what I mean? And I'm not picking on you. I'm just telling you. Let's get a stability in our life and let's start climbing into the kingdom. Do you hear me? Yes. Just get some stability, dude. Get on the rock. Well, I, I don't really have time to go to church. <laughs> Let me explain to you. Church don't save you. How many of you know church don't save you? Help me here. Church does not save you. No, sir. But you know what? You get around the right people and they help you walk. You know what I mean? How many of you know that... Um, let me just use my dad for an example. Can I use you for an example? Hey, you can, I can. You know what? I, we go out and we help him. You know why? Because he has a tendency once in a while to stumble. Right? So what happens? You gather around him. Let's stumble. I'll pick you up. Don't worry about it. I got you. I'll cover for you. If you fall, I'm going to catch you before you hit the dirt. You need to go back and read Galatians chapter 5. He said, you know what? You need to be the solid people among the people, and you need to encourage people to serve God. You know, my daddy gets out of the vehicle, and it's like, whoa, I've been drinking. No, he ain't. He just, he's just weak. That's all. he get over it. What are you there for? Because you don't want him to fall. How many of you know it's our job to keep people from crashing? I'm telling you the truth. It's our job to keep people from crashing and burning. But you know what? Sometimes that's really difficult because you don't never see them. How come y'all just looking at me like, really? It's true. How many of you know if you don't? That's why the Bible says, fail not to assemble yourselves together. We, I need you. You don't believe me, do you? How many of you know I got more? I got just as many faults as you do, probably more, but I need you. You know why? Because I'm encouraged by you and hopefully we can encourage one another and we can support one another and pray for one another and help each other make it in. Right? Come on. It's true. That's the reason you know I want to get all them kids Walt brings down here. He brings more kids than we have in church. You know, I love it when they come on down here. Whoa, look at all them kids. You know what I want to tell them? I want to say, listen, listen closely. How many of you know peer pressure is a horrible thing? And that's, that's what comes with crowds of wrong people. And I'm not being mean. I'm just telling you that you get around wrong people, you end up being wrong. You get around right people, it'll help you stand. You know, that's, I mean, that's common sense, right? I want to tell them, I'll say, you know what? Listen to me. I want you to be an influence, not influenced. Right? How many of you know that if we had a bunch of young people, they were influencing the place rather than being influenced by the place? Come on, you hear me? Somebody says, yeah, but you just said the law of association, you get rid of the wrong people, you can crash. I'm telling you that there's got to come a point sometimes when you get strong enough, you can go out and infiltrate people and you can help them, but you got to come back and get your strength back. How many of you eat every day? Do you eat every day? Yeah. Why do you do that? Well, because I like to eat. Well, so do I. I like to eat, but you do it for strength, right? That's why you come to church. Hopefully you come to church so you can get some strength and you can go out there and you can do your thing, Right? We can, you know what? I'm, I'm helped by people. How many of you believe people need people? Come on, help me here. It's the truth. People need people. I get a kick out of some people. I was talking to somebody the other day. They said, well, man, I don't know if I should say that. I might make everybody mad. Um... I really, let me just say it like this. I, I really feel uncomfortable going to a white church. I mean, I'm black. Really? If your church has any of that in it that makes you feel uncomfortable because you're not white, man, you need to get born again. 
You need to have something powerful happen in your life. You hear me? I wish every black person on earth would be in this church. Man, they got stuff, dude. Have you ever, I don't know, I've been to some churches up in Peach, man, them people, they got stuff too. They're about, you know, they, they got a little more black in them than I got. But they can sure praise God. Come on. I like that. Somebody says, yeah, but when we get to heaven, we're going to sit on a cloud real quiet. No, you're not. Don't dream. You're not doing it. The Bible says when John looked into the heavens, he said, it was so noisy, it sounded like a jillion roaring rivers. And they were all in front of God worshiping him. And you're going, oh, no, I got to be real quiet. <laughs> Believe me, it's OK. It's OK to have fun in church. And if you don't like that, I'm going to have fun in church without you. How's that? You know what? Let me tell you something. You may not agree with me completely and you may, you, I don't know. You may agree with me completely, but you just haven't lived with me long enough to disagree with me probably. How many of you know that if you live with somebody after a while, you disagree with them? You know why? Because they don't think like you think and they don't, you know. But we can have this and we can have fun doing it. How many of you know the Bible? Let me, let me give you this one. The joy of the Lord is what? Oh, really? Yeah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah, but I'm depressed. You know what happens? You get to looking around at all the stuff. And rather than keep you. Did you know the Bible says this? The Bible says the mind that has stayed upon thee, Jesus, shall rest in perfect peace. Yeah, but look at the world. Hey, you know what? I have my problems with the world. You know, listen, I have my problems with a lot of things. But the Bible says that if you'll watch Jesus, you'll be better off. Yeah. Right. That's what he says. Let me, let me give you some more scripture. I got to quit. I read that one. I didn't read that for you, but you can read it. Matthew 25 if you want to. Um, <clears throat> Let me, let me give you this thought. I want to read this out of 2 Peter. I don't know. I'm just going to throw this in there. I don't know if, I, if it fits, but I'm, I don't care. I'm going to put it in there anyway. He says in this 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, he says, But do not overlook this fact, beloved, with the Lord. One day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise. <clears throat> As some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Did you know? We think God's on our time, right? He probably got up this morning and goes, yep, it's five o'clock. I don't think God needs to have a clock in heaven. He don't even, I mean, he knows what one is because he had to do that for men. But God don't live by our time. Did you know that? Let me explain to you something. Did you know, according to God, a day is with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is, you know, that's an incredibly, that's 10 lifetimes for probably more than 10 lifetimes for most people. Most people don't live to be a hundred. Not anymore. But he's a thousand years. It says one day, one day is with the Lord is one day and one, a thousand years. Let me explain to you something. Did you know this is the way God sees it? Did you know, like this is Sunday, Saturday, Friday was the book of Acts written just a couple days ago. Doesn't that shock you? That's God don't God don't keep track of time like you do. And you know what? Let me explain to you something. The day's coming. The day's coming. The end of the thousand years or the end of the day, we all get to stand before the living God. Are you with me? Yes, yes we are. And you know what? He, I don't expect him to say, You know, I'm, I'm sure he's going to look us over like this right here. Hmm. I don't know who you are. Would that be not horrifying? Come on, help me here. Would that be horrifying? I don't know who you are. You worked the works of lawlessness. You're, you're rebellion, man. You, <clears throat> you didn't do what I asked you to do. Go ahead, depart from me. Oh, he goes on the left. Depart from me. Okay. Guess what? You're not going to get to argue. <laughs> nope, you don't get to argue. But it's better to stand there before the God Almighty and say, you know, well, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
enter thou into the kingdom of God. Enjoy your rest, man. You're done. You, you, you fought a good fight. You finished your race. Come on down here. How many ever watched The Price is Right? Come on down. And then people run down there. They're screaming and howling. They got their stupid suits on. You know, like I wouldn't win some money. And God said, come on down. It's going to be a wonderful time. Let me tell you something. Don't ignore the gospel, people. Don't ignore the gospel. Make it the priority in your life. You say, but I got too much going on. You're just deceiving yourself. There's nothing more important than doing the gospel, living the gospel, walking the gospel. I'm not saying you're going to do everything perfect, but the best you can do, do it. Make. How many of you know make is a time word? You didn't know that. Oh, let me say that again. Make is a time word. How many of you ever, you, you, you make a cake? You know, you got to get all the ingredients together. You put it all there and you stir it all up, pop it in the oven. Guess what comes out? A cake. Make your calling an election. Sure, you do it. Don't back up an inch. And if you backed up an inch, get up and take two inches back. Right? Oh, let me tell you something. Let me, let me just say this. Watch, I'm going to close this and you'll be happy. Do you know what? Christianity is not for the weak. Well, I don't want to be a Christian. No, Christianity is not for the weak. You know, that's why the Marines say, hey, we want just a few good men because not everybody's going to do this. Most people are going to crash. They're not going to make it. You get in the Marines and you, you know, you might make it in the Marines today because everything's changed, you know. They got woke. Whatever that means, you know, they woke up and they said, well, I don't know if I'm a man or a woman. Well, what, well, what do you mean? Well, I'm woke. You need to repent. Come on, right? Listen, I don't, I've never seen any but two genders. That's all I've ever seen in my life. How about you? Yeah, well, I'm an it. Yeah, well, go ahead and be an it. You know, some, you know, did you ever hear this story the other day? There's this goofy kid. This is how bad America is and how bad parenting is and how crazy it got out there. This kid says, well, I'm a cat. You know what the school did? They got a cat litter box and put it in the bathroom. I'm going, you got problems, ladies, gentlemen. Tell the girl she ain't no cat. If you want to use the toilet, get in there, but we ain't putting no cat litter in there. <laughs> Come on, really? How many of you know that so much of America's gone woke, but God's going to come. God's going to come and he's going to unwake them that way. How many of you know that all they have to have is get born again? They get born again and they're going to, they're completely to have a mind change, man. Did you know that's why Christianity is so offensive to the world? Because we just don't see things the same way. How many of you see wokeness as really Christianity? It ain't Christianity. How about racism? No, it ain't Christianity. How about when you divide people against each other? That ain't Christianity. Christianity says, no, let's come together. Let's love one another. Did you hear what I read? Provoking one another love? You know, love one another. Provoke one another. Enjoy one another. Come together and be somebody. Um, I'm going to say this last thing and I'm going to quit. <clears throat> I really believe this. I believe God's coming. And you know what he's going to do? How many, everybody, everybody remember this? Judgment starts where? At the house of God. So that means per, it'll start in you. It'll go out here and it'll go to universal, right? Start in the house of God. And God's going to come through. You know, did you know Jesus cleansed the temple twice? He did it twice. I believe we're on the second run here pretty quick. He's going to come in. It's scary to me. Listen, I'm, I'm, I got to quit. But listen, it's, it's, I forgot I didn't sing. I got all kinds of time. <laughs> Let me explain to you something. Did you know that it's scary to me? You look at churches nowadays. Churches that I actually had confidence in. And it's like, woo, duh, I ain't coming to your church. Not today. 
you have got woke. You say, I don't like that word. Well, I'm sorry, I don't either, but I had to use it because it's, it's, that's what they use, okay? I'm using the terminology they use. How many of you know when you get and you stray away from the power of the gospel, you missed it? If you're not preaching Jesus and Him crucified, you're preaching who knows what. You got to preach Jesus, my friends. You got to preach Jesus, my friends. He is the answer. He's the life and he's the resurrection. And if you're preaching just a church, if I if you come in here and say, yeah, boy, we got to church. We're, we're making it. We are the church. We're not the church. We're just a church. Jesus is God. He's the Lord. We come here not because we're the best church. We come here because we want to worship Jesus. And I want to see you all. Right? Okay. Russell's not here yet, so let's quit now. <laughs> he can walk in and say, what happened? Say, well, you're late, dude. It's already 2 o'clock, and you walked in really late. You, must, you need to sell your dogs. I just pick on Russell all the time. He's just really a good friend. So let's stand up and come down here and pray together, please.